Hello and welcome to streaming worship from the First Baptist Church of Salisbury, North Carolina. Well, unfortunately, it's another week that we're not back in our lovely sanctuary, but we're still worshiping. We're worshiping together even when so many of us tune in at the same time on Sunday morning to watch, watch this live stream. But we're also worshiping together through service, through love, through prayers, so making our lives a form of worship. And I feel so great, it feels so great to be a part of a church that is doing that, that, that its members are, are serving the Lord in so many different ways. I want to share with you some, some important information of some things coming up within our church. Um, we may not be meeting together in normal ways, but we are in other ways. And just for some exciting things that, for you to share um, with us in, in the next week or so. Next Sunday evening at, on the 17th, we're going to have at 6.30 p.m. a virtual business meeting. So if you want to be a part of the business meeting, cover some things in the church, it's going to be done virtually March 7, excuse me, May 17th at 6.30 p.m. If you did not get a constant contact link for that, or if you don't in the next day or so, give us a call in the church office. Call the minister's emergency phone. We'll make sure and get you that link so that you can be a part of that Zoom meeting for our business meeting next Sunday afternoon. Now, folks, next Sunday, I've got something exciting to share with you about our worship time. You all may know that many of our seniors have not been able to walk across their stage yet and have a graduation ceremony and, and things like that. And that each year when we do our youth-led worship service, we recognize our graduating seniors. We had hoped to do that later on, but the way that it looks, it's going to be so far in the future that, that we're going to be able to worship together in our sanctuary. We just made the decision to go back to our original date of May 17th to have a youth-led service. We're going to do that differently. Weather permitting, we're going to do it behind the FMC on a raised stage area. We're going to do our first attempt at a drive-in worship service. We're doing this mainly so that we can have a chance to recognize our seniors, let our students lead, and just have a little bit different time of worship for our church. So I want to encourage you, if you can be here next Sunday morning, be here before 11, park at the FMC. We'll have folks that will be directing you where to park. Again, we have to practice social distancing. The building is not going to be open. It's going to be a parking lot, that field behind the FMC, and the side parking lots, to do drive-up worship service. We're starting at 11, so it can be a little bit earlier to get um, parked in there. And we'll have, so where you can hear it, you can see what's going on. And not only be a great time of worship, it'll be a chance for our graduating seniors to be able to come across that stage and be recognized. Again, Jesus Christ is who we're worshiping next week, not our seniors. Our students, I've met with our praise team. They have done a fantastic job. It's gonna be a great time of worshiping the Lord, hearing the gospel proclaimed. And yes, yeah, spotlighting our seniors a little bit, but above all, Jesus is going to be worshiped. So please be here in the back of the FMC next Sunday, May 17th at 11 a.m. Be a little bit early for our drive-in worship service. We will also be streaming it on Facebook Live, possibly YouTube Live, but for sure Facebook Live. And then later on, an edited version of it will be put up on um, YouTube. Also, each week we continue to have the Tuesdays at 2, Where in the World is Reverend Rod? If you would like to be a part of that, if you know, have a great hobby or um, ministry you're involved with, give us a call in the church office. Extension 105 is Rod's um, extension, and he can call you back. Again, our offices are still not open, but we do monitor the phone calls. And if you ever need us for something, we do have the minister's emergency line that's available. You can go to the church website and um, find out that number if you don't know it already. And we want to remind you that as far as when we're going to open back up, when we're going to be allowed to have folks coming in for Sunday school classes, support groups, what we're doing as far as camps and everything else, that is a, a work in progress. We're following what the governor's office is allowing, the CDC guidelines and everything. As we know, we will let you know through announcements, through the church website and other ways. But, but we're just looking forward to, to the day we can come back in here and worship together. But until then, we are working hard to make sure that we're serving the Lord and meeting the needs of Rowan County. Now let's go for, to the Lord's word of prayer and then continue our worship service. Father God, I thank you that you're so much bigger than a virus. You're bigger than a church building. That our worship of you is not confined 
to times we are given. It's not confined to places where we can meet or methods that we can use. But Lord, our lives, you've called us for our lives to be a form of worship to you. Lord, I pray that we would worship you well during this virtual service. Lord, that we would seek your face. We would listen to your message. And Lord, that we would leave our time being a part of this streaming worship service empowered, encouraged, challenged, and ready to make a difference in this world. Lord, show off through First Baptist Church. Show off through each and every member. Show off your love, your power, and your glory during these days to a community that needs it. Lord, let us be faithful, and let us be faithful as we worship right now. For we give this service to you, and we just ask that you be glorified, and we do all of this, and we ask all of this, and we pray all of this in the name, the beautiful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's continue with worship. Acts 17, 24 through 25. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives one life and breath and everything else. And from Psalm 100 verses 4 and 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Please join with us as we sing together for the beauty of the earth. Sorry, I didn't want you to see that. 
Do you ever do that with the presents that are left for you? Shake them to see uh, what you might have and see if you can guess what's inside? This is a special day, and I, I need to say that right off. It's a special day because today is Mother's Day. And I hope you did something nice for your mother. I hope that you thought about maybe a gift for your mom. Now, a lot of times we go out and buy things, but you may not have had a chance to do that this Mother's Day. But I hope you did something. Maybe it's doing a drawing, making a card for your mother. Or one thing that I saw one time is I did a coupon book that for, uh, for mothers, you just tear off. Maybe I cleaned my room and I straightened up this or I fixed dinner and things like that. Put a little book together with all the things that you would like to do. So that's for Mother's Day, and that's a good time to give presents. But can you remember all the other times you get presents? Let's see, there's birthdays. Uh, there may be Christmas. There may be other special days, adoption days and things like that in your life that uh, you may be part of. But we always like to get presents. I love to get presents. Now, presents remind me that, uh, well, they're so beautifully, beautifully wrapped. Miss Robin wrapped these. And I know she spent a lot of time wrapping these. And, and that means something to me. And usually when people get you something, people know you pretty well. And they know exactly what to buy you. And they buy you what you really want. Sometimes I want you to understand that God gives us presents too. In fact, God gives us a lot of things that we take for granted many times. But what I want to talk about today is how you are a present from God to this world. You're like one of these gifts, a beautifully well thought out gift. He knows you better than anybody else. He um, knows you. He knows what you can do. He knows what you're going through. He knows you from before you were born to after you pass on from this world. God is like that. He gives us gifts so that we can serve other people. Let me read you something out of the book of Colossians in the New Testament, chapter 3, verse 23. And this is how God sees us and us doing service for other people. Whatever you do, do it from the heart as something done for the Lord and not for people, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Many times the gifts that we give are not wrapped up like this. They're the gifts of service, the gifts of time, the gifts of kind words, the gifts of personal preference, maybe a hug or a handshake or something like that. Maybe there's special things that you can do that nobody else could do. Maybe you can sing or play the piano or run fast, or maybe you're just the kind of person that makes people feel at home like they've always known you. What I want you to do is I want you to give those gifts away. That's what we're here for. That's our purpose. It's to give our time away. It's to give our talent away and give our treasure away. I want you to remember this week that you are a gift from God. And using your gift is just like opening one of these great presents that I'm going to open as soon as I can. But let's have a word of prayer before we do that. God, teach us to discover our gifts. Help us develop our talents and show us where to direct those things that you can be glorified and you can be served. We thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name, the ultimate gift that we pray. Amen. <laughs> to you, the Lord turn his 
gracious to you. Your presence I made whole. You 
Last week, we began our Young Musicians Month, where one of our children or youth play an instrument or sing uh, during what we would normally have as our offertory time. After the offertory prayer today, Ava Wisnett will be playing Holy, Holy, Holy. Good morning, church family. Pray with me, please. Dear Lord, we come to the time of the service where we are thankful for all the many blessings that you've given us and acknowledge that all of our blessings come from you. And Lord, it's a privilege to give back a portion of those blessings that we can share your love with those around us, not just in our county, but in our nation and in our world. We thank you for those blessings that you give us each and every day. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day is typically one of my favorite Sundays of the year. I love the parent-child dedication ceremonies that we often have on Mother's Day. The one that we were scheduled to have at First Baptist today, we will reschedule as soon as is practically possible. During my years as pastor of East Baptist Church, our congregation knew that they could expect a sermon uh, about the family on Mother's Day. That's what I want to do this morning. If you have your Bibles at home, turn to Exodus chapter 2, and we'll read verses 1 through 10. Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Our story begins this morning with a, a young couple, a man and a woman who were married in Egypt. Now this couple, each of them were Israelite slaves. They were descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same Jacob, Jacob whose name was changed later in life to Israel. He and his family had immigrated to Egypt during the time of great famine, when his son Joseph had been made prime minister to prepare for the coming famine. There had been 70 in their extended family when they took up residence in Egypt. But as the years passed by, God blessed them greatly and they multiplied. Exodus chapter 1 verse 7 tells us the Israelites were fruitful and multiplied greatly and became exceedingly numerous so that the land was filled with them. God was keeping His promise to Abraham to make his descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. But this backfired in a way on them. The Egyptians became suspicious and afraid of these people known as Israelites after their forefather Israel or as Hebrews after the language they spoke. Verse 8 of chapter 1 tells us, Then a new king who did not know Joseph came to power in Egypt. This Pharaoh put the people into slavery to oppress them and, and to stop them from being a threat. But God blessed them all the more. Pharaoh became so threatened that he oppressed them even harder with ruthless labor that made their lives bitter and painful and difficult. But the more the Egyptians oppressed the Israelites, the more God blessed them and they continued to multiply and grow in number. So Pharaoh ordered the midwives to kill the baby boys born uh, to the Israelite women during childbirth. But the midwives feared God and made up an excuse as to why they were unable to carry out Pharaoh's command. So then Pharaoh ordered that every boy baby born to an Israelite woman should be thrown into the Nile River. And that would take care of the problem, he thought. We need to stop here and we need to think about these set of circumstances and remember today that families don't exist in a vacuum. Every generation faces its own set of challenges. Now, I know that, that my generation and most of us that will be listening to this uh, service this morning, that we can say that we have been blessed to live uh, during the one, one of the most peaceful, prosperous, and free uh, periods of human history. We need to thank God for that blessing. But like the Israelites, every generation faces its own challenges. 
we're facing a new challenge in these days. How do we adjust and uh, react to the reality of living during a pandemic? How do we adjust and live as Christians even though we're not able to meet together as is our normal custom? How can we teach our children to, to seek the Lord during times of trouble such as these? There are many questions that we must ask ourselves during this age in which we live. In Exodus chapter 2, we're introduced to two individuals that face their own trying circumstances. They were two nobodies as far as the world was concerned, but God had a great plan that He had set in motion, and they were a vital part of God's plan. We aren't even told their names here in chapter 2. Later, later we learn that the father's name is Amram and the mother is Jochebed. These two were given the early stewardship of training and leading the baby who would become the great deliverer of the Old Testament, Moses. On this Mother's Day, let's look closely at his mother, Jochebed, and see how she truly made a difference in the life of her son. The first thing that we'll note about Jochebed is that she saw the great potential in her child. She saw the great potential in her child. Verse 2 of chapter 2 tells us she saw that Moses was a fine child. He was a fine child. In Genesis, the same word is translated as handsome or beautiful. Now, doesn't every mother think that their newborn baby is a, is a handsome or a beautiful baby? I can't tell you how many times I've been asked the question, uh, Pastor, don't you think my baby is beautiful? Don't you think my baby is handsome? Now, Penny tells me no one likes a lying preacher, so sometimes I've had to uh, respond, yes, uh, he is quite a boy, or yes, you have a fine girl. Uh, but in God's eyes, we need to, to realize that uh, all children are beautiful. All children are fine. Hebrews chapter 11 adds to our understanding of what is meant in the Scripture here. We read in verse 23, By faith Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw that he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Moses was a fine baby. He was no ordinary child in his parents' eyes. As Moses' mother looked into the eyes of this innocent baby that had been condemned to death by the Pharaoh, she knew in her heart that God had something special in child in mind for her child. He was a fine child, exactly right, specially created by God to accomplish the deliverance of God's special chosen people. Again, the Bible teaches us that every baby is fine and beautiful in God's sight. Every baby comes to life with the purpose, a part of the plan of Almighty God. There's no such thing as an ordinary or unessential child in God's mind. The life of every child is to be honored, valued, and protected. My sister-in-law's uh, mother passed away a number of years ago. Several years after that, her father uh, married a woman, and uh, my sister-in-law's new stepmother became a part of our extended family. And as we got to know her, we learned a part of her story that as a young woman, uh, she had been raped, and because of the rape, she had become pregnant, and she had a decision to make. So she decided to uh, keep that baby, to uh, bring that baby to term, and to give birth to that baby. And then after the baby was born, uh, he was adopted by another family. Uh, she did not know of the circumstances and details until years later, but uh, as, as the Lord would have it, uh, the two were able to find each other. And she discovered that he had been adopted and raised by a, a wonderful Christian family. He had come to know the Lord and serve the Lord. He had been called as a missionary and served as a missionary uh, many years during his life. And they developed a close bond after all those years. Uh, isn't it wonderful that, that even uh, in those difficult circumstances when she became pregnant, this woman could, would know that God has a plan, and God has placed potential within each child that He has created, and we must do the same. Mothers, I want to encourage you this morning when the way is difficult for you, 
in raising your child. Uh, that when you get up in the middle of the night uh, for the third time, perhaps with a, a screaming baby, uh, that you ask God, say, God, help me. God, I believe that you have something special for my baby. Help me to remember that every day. Or perhaps as you're juggling, uh, trying to keep your, maintain your own normal responsibilities, and now you have children at home, you're trying to help them with their school responsibilities and stay focused and on task, and you don't know how you can keep all the, the balls in the air at the same time and accomplish everything that you're called on to accomplish during these days. Uh, you want to say, Lord, help me to be all I can be, all I need to be, all I want to be for my child during these days. I want to stop this morning and, and I want to, to thank God for my mother. Uh, she's been with the Lord for almost 23 years now. We, we still miss her greatly. And when uh, I get to heaven, I hope that the, the stories we hear of, of uh, our families being some of the first to, to welcome us to heaven, I hope those are true. But whether I, I see my mom early or, or a little bit later, uh, I just anticipate throwing my arms around her and with the, the knowledge of uh, a fuller knowledge of what it means to be a parent after uh, she departed, uh, raising teenage daughters, seeing them married, having grandchildren come into the world, and learning just how much uh, grandparents do love a grandchild uh, through the, the, the vantage of additional years in perspective, just uh, throwing my arms around my mom and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for how patient you were with me. Uh, thank you for how you put up with my shenanigans as a boy. Uh, as a five-year-old, maybe I wasn't quite five. I got, uh, I guess I was angry and had a glass pitcher and was outside and threw it against a tree. Uh, my younger brother was standing too nearby and uh, he still has a scar on his forehead with about four or five stitches as a result of uh, uh, my antics that day. And then a few years later, we were living in Anson County and uh, Mom and Dad were inside the house, and Dad was performing the ceremony for a couple getting married there at the parsonage. My brother and I were sitting on the front steps, and as we sat on the front steps, I decided it, it'd be a good time to give my brother a haircut. Well, I probably don't have to tell you how that turned out. It, it was a bad experience in more ways than one for me. Uh, but again, I, I thank God for a, a mom and dad that uh, trained me and put up with me. Uh, another time shortly after that, my brother and I, uh, became frustrated with the babysitter, and uh, so we caught some of our chickens out of the chicken coop and let them out of the house, let them into the house, and uh, we took some sand spurs from out in the yard and put them inside the door. And uh, I don't, I guess we thought we were going to get even with that babysitter, but again, I don't think that turned out too well for us. And these are just the stories I'm willing to share with you this morning. There are more that I won't share. I'll keep that between me and my family. But thank God for parents and for mothers that uh, will correct us, will scold us when we need it, will point us in the right direction, uh, will provide that godly discipline and training and nurture and love. And why do they do it? Why do they do it? They do, do it because they love us, but they do it because they see the great potential that God has placed within their child. Uh, if you had a parent that saw that potential in you and invested in your life and pointed you to the Lord. Stop and give thanks to the Lord today. If your parent's still living, better yet, call her up or even call your father up today and tell them how much you appreciate them and love them for the investment they have made in you. Our mothers are protectors of us in the middle of a storm, just as Moses' mother protected him. And a child can sense that. I remember the last time that I, I burst out into tears as a, as a boy. I had faced a disappointment, was telling my mother about it. All of a sudden, I just started crying. And now instead of grabbing her around the knees, uh, probably put my head on her shoulder at that point in life uh, and just sobbed. And she put her arms around me and comforted me. And isn't it wonderful to know that you have someone that you can turn to and go to and you'll receive that comfort from that person that cares and loves for you, perhaps loves you perhaps like no one else does on this earth. Our mothers believe in us when no one else will. They love us enough to warn us and, and scold us and give us the discipline we need to make something of our lives. They do it for the good of their child. And why? Again, because they love us and they see the potential that God has placed within 
each one of us. Jochebed saw God's potential within her baby. But then the second thing that we notice is that she heard and obeyed a higher authority than that of Pharaoh. The Bible tells us that she hid Moses for three months. These Hebrew people, these followers of the Lord, knew the value of life, that life is a gift from God. And they knew that there is a higher power than that of a man, even if that man be a king. The true follower of the Lord must obey God rather than men. That's exactly what Amram and Jochebed did. Notice here that there was a mother and a father who were willing to stand against powerful evil. The most powerful man in the world had said, their baby must die. Jochebed defied the king, the Pharaoh. She was being faithful and true. She embodied true, faithful love, love that's willing to sacrifice for the good of your child. Now, Pharaoh was being used by Satan to try and kill the deliverer before the deliverer had a chance to free his people from their bondage. Does that sound familiar? Does that story sound familiar to you? But here we see that Jochebed was willing to put her life on the line for the sake of her child. A loving parent will do whatever it takes for their child to get the job done. Then notice that Jochebed had the faith to follow the Lord's leading. Eventually, she realized that she could hide Moses safely no longer. So she devised a plan, a, a reed basket, some tar, and an older sister to watch what would happen. After three months, how hard do you think it was for Jochebed to place little Moses into that basket, set the basket into the water, and, and see the basket go off into the water? Don't you imagine there were tears falling as she let that basket go? and she left Miriam to see what would happen. When Moses is discovered by Pharaoh's daughter and adopted as her own, we might be tempted to think, well, well, what a clever mother Moses had, how smart she was. But do you really think that this was Jochebed's idea, that it was her own doing, it was her own, was it, it was her own plan? If you step back far enough and you look at, at the big picture, I believe you'll see that this story is a part of a, a much bigger and a greater story about a greater deliverer who would be born to a young virgin named Mary over a thousand years later. This is God's story and God's divine plan. And Jochebed and Amram had a great part in it. It was faith that enabled Jochebed to hear the still small voice of truth in the midst uh, of the noise and clamor of the pagan society in which they lived. It was faith that enabled her to be courageous and obey the voice of the Lord instead of Pharaoh. It was faith that it helped her and enabled her to walk with the Lord and be sensitive to His Spirit's leading as the idea was birthed in her heart and in her mind uh, to build a mini, mini ark uh, to save her son from the water. Mothers and fathers are you listening for God's voice during these days of a pandemic? Will your children see your faith shining through during these days? Will they see in your actions as well as hear in your words just how valuable they are to their Creator? And at all times and in all circumstances, God has a plan for His people. God has a plan for this world. God has a plan for each one of us as followers of Jesus. Jochebed had the faith to follow the Lord's leading. I hope we will as well. And then notice that Jochebed instilled in her son the knowledge of his heritage and faith. She instilled in him the knowledge of his own heritage and faith. Now the Bible doesn't come out and say it directly, but I believe if you look between the lines that it's clearly there, that that's exactly what happened. Pharaoh's daughter needed a nurse for her baby, and who was available? None other than Jochebed. So she took Moses home, and she nursed him, perhaps for several years. I believe that however old Moses was, when his mother took her to Pharaoh's daughter, and that he would live from that point on 
in Pharaoh's household that by that time, before he lived in the royal palace, that he had heard the story of his people uh, and their God and how their God had delivered them and God had brought them there, uh, that he had heard that story many, many times. Was Jochebed allowed uh, an occasional visit with her son after she took him to live in the royal palace? Did she continue to have influence in Moses' life even after he grew to be a man? I believe she did. Here's the evidence. It's right there in the story of the burning bush. You remember how Moses was a shepherd in Midian. He was tending his father-in-law Jethro's uh, sheep there on the backside of the desert. And the Lord appeared to him from within a, a burning bush. God told Moses to take off his sandals because he was standing on holy ground. Then God said to Mo Moses, and notice exactly what he says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I am the God of your father. Which father was God speaking of? Was he speaking of his uh, adopted father, his stepfather, uh, the husband of Pharaoh's daughter? Was that the father that uh, God was speaking of? Or was he talking about his blood father, Amram? I believe it's clear because of the others that mentioned that God was speaking about Amram. I am the God of your Hebrew father, your true father, your blood-born father, Amram the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, how did Moses know this? And how did he know if we read one more verse in chapter 2, if we had read verse 11, uh, it appears twice that as Moses went out among uh, the Hebrew people, that these were his people. And it appears that he knew that they were his people. How did he know that God was the God of his father, Amram, that the Hebrew people were his people? Who taught him these realities? Who else but his mother, Jochebed? Moms and dads, I, I want to encourage you this morning to not subcontract out uh, the religious training of your children. It's wonderful that you involve your children in the life of a church, and, and First Baptist has much to offer our children and, and our young people as they grow and mature, and how wonderful to see the training they receive here. But don't assume that other people are able to teach your children all they need to know about their faith and the God that has blessed you. They need to hear your faith story, your pilgrimage in the faith, how God has blessed you and how God has blessed you and answered your prayers. God will do the same for them if they'll trust Him. No one else can take your place in bringing your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This COVID-19 pandemic might be a time that your son or daughter looks back upon it and they remember how you responded, whatever the challenges were that you faced during this time, and many of our people are facing great challenges. They might remember how your faith shone through during these days, and it might make a difference in their faith and strengthening them and their relationship with the Lord Jesus. So instill in your child Plant uh, seeds in their lives of, of faith, the knowledge about your faith and the faith that God will give them as He trusts them. Finally, today, as we close, be reminded how Jochebed was rewarded for her overcoming faith. She was rewarded for her faith. Someone else loved her baby. Isn't that a wonderful thing when you see someone that, that cares for and loves your baby and Pharaoh's daughter loving Jochebed's baby meant the difference of life and death for her child. Wasn't that a blessing to Jochebed? Church, we are called, and I think in a very clear and direct way, uh, to, to participate in, in the loving and the training of children. And so as God gives us this opportunity, let's make sure that we provide a, a safe environment and a loving environment to, to let children know how valued they are, how valuable they are to their Creator, and what God will do in and through their lives if they'll trust Him. What a blessing that we have to love on the children uh, in the neighborhoods around us. And then also see that uh, in this story, the enemy paid Jochebed 
to do what she would have gladly done for free, and that is to raise her son in his early years. Isn't God good? Doesn't God surprise us with good gifts as we follow Him? And then she saw her son become a mighty man of God. Now, we're not told this in these verses, but again, I believe it's there between the lines. Don't you believe that Jochebed prayed? She prayed that God would protect and save her child and God would bless her child. And could she have imagined in her wildest dreams how God would save Moses and then how God would use Moses to be the deliverer of their people? This past Wednesday night in our prayer service, we looked at Jeremiah 33.3, where God says, Call to me, and I will show you great and wonderful things that you do not know. I think here is a prime example where uh, someone in faith cried out to the Lord, and God answered not just giving what she prayed for, but giving far more than she ever could have imagined. Again, don't we serve a good God? And then... Through her son, she saw God accomplish his work and keep his promises to Abraham and his descendants. What a reward, what a blessing for a faithful mother. I pray that we will commit ourselves, whatever our relationships with children or grandchildren might be today, I pray that we will recommit ourselves to being all we can be for the Lord Jesus in this vital work. I want to paraphrase a a proverb to close with this morning. Train up a child in the way he should go and watch what our God will do. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for the blessing of godly mothers. And Lord, I thank you for mine and many people listening today will say amen. And thank you for their godly mothers and godly fathers that that brought us up and taught us about you and, and how to love you and serve you and follow you. Lord, what a blessing. We thank you for that investment they've made in us. Lord, as we come to you this morning, uh, many of us parents, many of us grandparents, uh, Lord, help us to be what you want us to be, what you call us to be. Help us to see the potential in the lives of those around us. Lord, help us to respond not to the voice of uh, society or our culture, but Lord, help us to respond to your still small voice and the vision you have for each child that you create. Lord, help us to be faithful in in training and teaching and nurturing and and guiding. Uh, Lord, we confess that we cannot be all that we want to be and all that we're called to be on our own. So, Lord, we need your help. So fill us with your Spirit. Uh, Lord, just give us an overflowing of your love. Uh, Lord, work through us that when people look at us, they'll see you. And thank you for the gracious care you are providing to them. Lord, we thank you for the family of faith at First Baptist. Lord, we look forward to the day that we can be together again. But in the meantime, help us to be all that we can be in these days for one another, for the world, and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing a hymn of a response this morning. Would you join with us? Would you hear the Lord speaking and respond as he leads you? God bless you. Please sing with us. Would you